welcome, Poly TML fans. I'm your host, Joseph Moore, here, and I have Jaden and Stuart with me to do some recaps. Yo, yo. All right. I was most just trying to think ever could have said, G'day. Jeez. <laughs> Guy, <laughs> mate. <everybody>. Guy, mate. <laughs> you stereotypical right, Aussie and Kiwi. Uh, yeah, that's right. It's from the land down under. We <laughs> are talking about the Myrtle Magic Carts. Ma- magic Carts, Jesus. Uh, coached by James. And his team is Incineroar, Crocodile, Rotom Wash, Vaporeon, du- Dublade, Emolga, Azumarill, Shedinja, Mr. Mime, Cantonian, and Bolty Guys. Overall, he has some pretty so, good cards. What do you guys think? Yeah. I, um, I thought it was an interesting team. He picked arguably the best or most influential Pokemon in the format with Incineroar. Um, but he followed it up with another Dark type second pick. You know, shared weaknesses, but double intimidate. So, you know, that's a, a bonus, I guess. Um, then he realized that the weaknesses needed patching, so he picked up back to back water types. And he actually ended up with three water types, so he's almost like a fisherman with his magic cups. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, Levitate and Water Absorb but, covers some of the weaknesses, but uh, he's got several ghosts as well. It's an interesting mix, you know, two dark, three water, three ghosts, two electrics. Honestly, um, I, didn't about, I didn't think about that, how many repeat typings he has. I'm all for repeat typings. Um, the, <laughs> if, you, if, you just, if you just draft one type, you limit your weaknesses. <laughs> you go all in. You can't argue you have no synergy if they're all the same type. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, hey, because he's got three ghost types, it makes him knock off weak, you know. Um, yeah, he's got... He's got Azu and that to absorb the knockoffs, but yeah, it'd be interesting to see how he gets Pokemon like Poltergeist or Azumarill set up to sweep, which I think is going to be the issue. What do you guys reckon? I, I think it, I'll be most interested to see what he does with Shed Engine because he picked that pretty early on in the prefix. And I remember, remember commenting on this a few times, but in a, in a draft that allows Dynamax Pokemon, in a draft that's very heavy on like weather and mm-hmm. I just don't see I, I don't see Shed Engine ever doing a, a good job so I, I just think that, I, I could be wrong I, I, there could be some some sort of scheme or some sort of strategy that I've just never seen before but I just you look at it and I think I just don't see anything that it can actually bring to the table the only um, thing I can see it bringing to the table is uh, skill swapping Wonder Guard onto something oh yeah true like Rotom Wash, you can't hit it with anything but a grass type move. That could be big. Yeah. Plus, you know, Rotom can trick stuff and burn stuff and paralyze stuff and switch around. And I like it's my favorite Rotom form is Rotom Wash. So, in that respect, he's got a got a good pick the best one. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's these shared weaknesses that are gonna do it for me. Knowing James, he's got a plan. You know, like he's a really good battler. He's gonna get it all sorted. But yeah. On paper, I find it a bit hard to get my head around. Yeah, and leaning with that, I think Bulk, um, he does have a lot of Pokemon that are just naturally bulky by themselves. So I, I yeah. graded him like around an 8 because of it. Yeah, I, got, I gave him an 8 as well. Yeah, and me too. 8 all around. All right. And then uh, Speed Tier, I didn't know how I felt about it in in retrospect like just looking at it uh he i granted really it have, very long yeah he doesn't have a tailwinder side of emolga and i don't think he has a trick rumor at all and most of his team's too slow for for you know tailwind i mean tailwind will help them but uh trick room he's kind of fucked in trick room yeah what's his what's his fastest mine crocodile old guys mr mime is it as fast Ooh, as mine? Mr. Mime, I think, has 90 speed. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so I I just gave him, I, I gave, him a, I gave him a 4 for speed because nothing over 100. Um, no obvious way to boost speed. And, you know, you're almost relying on just hitting, you know, straight out, just attacking, which is a fine strategy, but I think in doubles especially, you need to have something there just in case. 
you know, you need to have something that's really good in trick room or something that's really good to double speed. You know, all you guys can shell smash, but that's about it. Yeah, I really see it as um, I don't know. You got to have some kind of speed control that's reliable. And Emoka, I don't feel is reliable to get up tailwinds and double. Uh, what would you rate it as, Joe? I gave him a five. Yeah, I gave him a four. I, I gave him a six because I think he's got. I don't think that oh, where my speed control that interpretation is a bit different. Is I, I like using um priority in speed control. So I don't think that is a form of speed control. So he's got um the blades um shadow sneak. shadow has got um, shadow sneak. Azamero's got um. Aqua Jet. Aqua Jet. You know, these are those are those are big moves, and they can. <laughs> if it gets to the point where he's got a few Pokemon on the other team's side that are in low health, they, they will take a big kill. So I think you, I think it's a little unfair to say that he's got no speed control. But I think he, but I do take your point that a lot of his Pokemon are, you know, around that base ninety speed and and even like yeah. that middling speed. Uh, so, but I do think I just, that, that yeah. those, those if he even just had one, one mon over a hundred would have made all the difference i feel and personally. I, I feel like he does have some speed control i just don't think it's reliable speed control because you, you know uh there's a few indeedies drafted uh there's someone who can just get up psychic terrain from using a psychic move so there, there's a lot of ways to falter uh, priority moves in double yeah Okay. So, so if he's relying on priority, that that'd be uh, a really niche thing for him to do this season. Yeah, as long as he's not fighting Serena. Yeah, <laughs> and luckily <laughs> that's in the other division for him. <laughs> All right. So, what did y'all get for wall breaking? Uh, well, you know, you've got moms that can hit hard. Like, there's no doubt. The blade can hit hard, and Azumarill's got belly drum, and Polti guys can shell smash. Crocodile's, you know, beast. But other than that, you know, unless you bring offensive Incineroar or, you know, offensive Rotom Wash, it's not a ton. I mean, it's definitely not the worst. Yeah, it's not the worst. Um, I thought it was pretty middle. Um, like, there's a bunch of setup potential. And Crocodile Moxie, Pulse Guy Smashing, Azumarill Belly Drumming. Uh, even Rotom Wash Nasty Plotting a few weeks. I'm sure that'll come. And, uh. Yeah. So I, I give him a 7 on it. Yeah, me too. So I think I went a 6 on this one. Um, and I think just because it, it relies on. There's a bit of reliance on, you know, just Crocodile. Like if you if you're running um, Moxie, you're not getting that double intimidate. Mm -hmm. And if you're running Moxie, you, you're probably likely running staff on it too. So if you're running things like Rock Slide, for instance, on for Earthquake, you're affecting potentially affecting your own Pokemon, or you're potentially running the risk of someone run, running Wide Guard. And I think that stops a lot of those attacks from you know from landing. Mm -hmm. So I think. Wall breaking is a bit is a bit funny. I, I take again. I take uh, Stuart's point that he's got a few good mods that can hit fairly hard. Wall breaking, I'm, I think, is sort of rough, a bit rough here. Fair. <clears throat> All right. Uh, next up, we do have a recovery support. So recovery and support. Um, I feel. Yeah. I feel he's lacking in the recovery department, but he does have decent support on. I mean, yeah, Incineroar is like a support beast. Vaporeon can do Vaporeon things. Mm -hmm. um, Rotom's got a, a tool set that's really good for doubles. Um, I don't really know what Amolga does. Shedinja's going to be cool just because it's Shedinja. And Mr. Mime does Mr. Mimey stuff, so <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna be a, a fun team to to see what to, to battle. But um, 
there's no out and out. There's, there's not like a Mandibuzz or a Clefable or something that's solely geared towards support. Mm-hmm. I, I think Incineroar is the, is the mm-hmm. key in this category. Like yeah. running Snarls and getting Intimidates off, it's just going to be an absolute, it's going to be a huge problem for anything to come up against. Is There's no two ways about it. I think sneakily Mr. Mime will make a big support option with the it also gets fake out ability and of course the screens and yeah. that. Um I feel, I feel like it's gonna make uh, a move there. What's the Kentonian one's ability? Sorry? Sorry. What's the Kentonian Mr. Mime's ability? Soundproof. Uh, Interesting. Sound, soundproof, filter and uh, Technician. Technician. Right, so. Fake-ass could be good. Yeah. That's, it, 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 it could pop. It could pop something off there. Because pop those hyper voices. Well, he was running filter because he got he gets, he gets follow me as well. Yeah, that's true. I didn't know Mr. So Mike follow me. Sure does. There we go. All right, well, I gave him an eight for support, recovery and support. Yeah, me too. Eight all around. All right, and um, finally, lastly but not least, we Team Synergy. Uh, I'll just come out and say it. I give them a seven. I don't, I don't, see the, I don't see the synergy going with the multiple types. That uh, I just don't feel cover very well each other. But maybe he can make it work. I, I just have to wait to see. Yeah, the fact he picked the mons in the order that he did, I think. It was a, a plan on his part, so I don't think it's catastrophic. So I didn't want to give it a five or a six. So I too gave it a seven. But um, yeah, it's interesting. They were. I think the the fact that he had three ghosts is probably the biggest problem. But when he's got two dark types to cover it, not so bad. So seven, I think, is a fair enough score. I think he's probably just filling. I think he's just decided to pick Pokemon that fill a particular role rather than a. Um specific you know looking at pokemon types right like he's got yeah which is which is fine you know doubles is i do i, you I, I can do, do it when i'm not drafting monotype teams I, I that's what i do like i pick pokemon that fill a specific role that i need it to fill out mm-hmm. because ultimately he can only bring six pokemon each week so who's not to say who's not to say he only brings one of each type you know it's not going to be an issue if he wants to bring exactly. all three ghosts in one match he might but I don't be, think he will. He might be very assault vest and Cineral. Like, assault vest and Cineral yeah. will, will eat up any kind of dark type attack or ghost type attack. Yeah. No problem. Not a problem. Like I said, so what do you get for overall, overall Joe? Uh, overall... Let me see. Add that last one. I got 35 out of 50. So, Same. not yeah. bad. Not bad at all. Right. And yeah, I got 30, 34. Any last talks about this team before we go? I think it's a damn shame that, that the, um, we still don't have a a um, virtual recorder. I would love to see this team in action. Let's just sort of yeah, see how it goes and how like, I'm actually tempted to set up my cell phone just to record the TV, just so I can have something to look at, you know? Mm-hmm. Like anything, anything's got to be better than nothing. It's so <laughs> frustrating. <laughs> Well, best of luck, James, and we're on to the next team.